have a new Van Dorn metal V16 mouthpiece. Uh, I definitely wanted to do this a large chamber versus the small. So as you can see here, I got the mouthpiece and I got the ligature. And because it's a T5, I got this whole thing for $300. I got my other one for $285 with the whole shebang there. And this one was only $15 more. Normally, this is going for $400. But I imagine they probably had this T5 for a long time. So... Uh, the price was dropped on that. So, alrighty, let's continue. All right, let's open these things up and see what we got. Finally got a cap. I didn't get a cap last time. But before, they came in this, like, champagne-colored bag. It's kind of cognac-colored thing, but this is just kind of in the box like that. You have your removable plates. And let's get to the mouthpiece. Ooh, it's like I get this little pouch thing here. It's like a nice velvety touch. And there we go. T5. As you can see, there's like a little tiny forehead that's right here. It's very similar to an auto link in terms of how it kind of bores out like this. Inside the wall here also looks very auto linkish. We have this rounded chin area right here. I call that window a chin. I try to stick to some face analogies because that translates into other languages very well. Let me try and show you this from this angle here. Let me show you this from the back. And as you can see on the bottom here, we got large. Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent ya. We take a look at these rails. They're kind of medium. I want to show you guys it from this angle with the light. So that way you can get an idea of what that inside chamber looks like. Compared to the T6 small chamber. You see there's a very well defined ring that's there. Six. Also, I think this is pretty cute. Uh, they have this 40s on here like that. For the 1940s kind of vintage sound. Uh, later, I'm going to do a comparison of this versus my uh, modern vintage metal auto link. So... You guys can stay tuned for that one. Of course, you have your large here. Then you have your small here for that one. You can also see that the small chamber mouthpiece is a little longer and thinner. In the US, putting small on a mouthpiece like this makes people afraid to buy it. Because I get so many people that are just like, hey, tell me about the small. I don't, I want to get it, but I don't know about the small chamber. I like the way you sound, but I don't, you know, which has motivated me to make a video like this. And hopefully in the future from the Van Dorn factory, they can just write it in French. But write something that implies a small, like quick, fast, rapid, something that the air is going to do in French. Something that's small like this, or maybe some type of label or something, but like small just makes people afraid, at least in the US. I'm going to put my mouthpiece saver on this thing, and then we're going to play it, and then we're going to compare it to the, uh, the small chamber. Okay, this is the T5 large chamber. <laughs> Definitely like more body in the lower register with the T5 for sure. 
which I think makes it very attractive for somebody that wants to get into playing this Van Dorn metal mouthpieces. All right, let's continue. Okay, T6. This is the small chamber. <laughs> small chamber. Van Dorn markets this as being the most modern sound of the small, medium, and large. Here we go. <laughs> I feel really at home playing on this, but for someone that's not used to something like this, you're going to notice this extra bit of resistance in the lower register. So let me switch over to the T5 and then I'll do that same thing. Okay, so this is the T5. This is the large chamber and they market this more toward like a 1940s vintage kind of sound. I'm using the same read. I wouldn't normally do that because this facing is a little bit smaller. The T6 is around a 98, and this is like a 92, a 93. It looks and feels very auto-linkish, but it's got, it's more refined than the auto-link sound, but it, it just has that kind of feel to it. All right. <laughs> Initial attack is much less resistant. So let me play some altissimo stuff. <laughs> using this Sony camera with this. Hopefully this thing won't be in the way, but this is the T5 large chamber, and I want to try and use this in a more reflective area. So let's play this and see what we got. I also switched up uh, the reed. I'm going to use a reed that's just better for this mouthpiece. I'm going to compare that to the T6 also, and I'm going to use the best reed for that mouthpiece also. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, so I'm going to do the same trick, but now I got my T6 small chamber. All right, so let's get to it. This T5 large chamber is considerably different from the T6 small chamber. This mouthpiece, the small chamber, is actually baffled differently. I just assumed they were baffled the same, but the chamber was the only thing that was different, but that's not the case. Uh, you can see about a quarter of the way here, this is where this angle changes and goes into the mouthpiece, where on this mouthpiece is pretty much very open. There's like a tiny little bit or it's flat right here and then it goes into the chamber there. So this mouthpiece is very effective at doing what it is that it does. I like it a lot. I got a really good deal with it. I'm going to incorporate this more and ultimately I want this to be more of my rehearsal mouthpiece or my mouthpiece that I play when I have like really long winded type of gigs and then this will still be my favorite uh, mouthpiece here, the small chamber. So as far as a recommendation, I would highly recommend that you start with a large or a medium chamber because of how easy blowing it is. This is a really, really easy mouthpiece to get into playing. As opposed to something like this, you're gonna wind up with just some unusual characteristics. Now, they benefit you if you've gone through your whole overtones and really understanding how to push the sound of a saxophone. Once you've got all that kind of discipline together, then I think you're definitely at advantage for using a small chamber mouthpiece. And plus, the way a saxophone is designed, it's smaller on one end and larger on the other. And it always seemed a little weird to me that you'd have a mouthpiece which had a large chamber and then you go to a neck that's small and then large again. Uh, the small chamber just seems like a more logical thing. But ultimately, it's gonna come down to whatever your preference for playing is. And that's all I got for you. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.